In this lesson, we're going to take a look at creating new mailbox users in the Exchange Server 2010 training lab. So here on the Exchange Server, uh, what we're going to do is uh, look at how to create a mailbox. And that's done here in the Exchange Management Console inside this recipient configuration section under mailbox. So in my training lab so far, I've only got one user mailbox, which is the administrator account. That mailbox was created automatically uh, when I first installed Exchange. And there's also this other mailbox here, which is the Discovery Search mailbox. Um, and that's a special kind of mailbox called a Discovery mailbox. And that's really a topic for another time. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a brand new mailbox. And we can do that over here in the Actions pane uh, with this new mailbox uh, item or of course just by right clicking selecting new mailbox. The first dialog in this new mailbox wizard uh, lets us choose the mailbox type. So most mailboxes for uh, regular people will be user mailboxes so that's uh, a mailbox that is associated with a person in most cases. And there's also these other types of uh, mailboxes available as well. We have room mailboxes and equipment mailboxes and they're almost the same as a user mailbox except they have some additional attributes uh, available on them that can be used for automating the scheduling of things like meeting rooms or loan equipment in your organization. So if you are creating mailboxes for those purposes make use of these special room or equipment mailbox types uh, but for regular people you'll just want to use uh, user mailboxes. Now the fourth option down here is for linked mailboxes which as the description says is uh, mailboxes in this organization that would be accessed by a user in a separate forest entirely. Uh, that's not really applicable in this scenario so just be aware that that's what that's for uh, but it's not something we're going to look at right now. So I'm choosing user mailbox. We'll skip through to the next part of the wizard. So there's two ways you can create a mailbox. You can create a mailbox for a new user and what that means is you are creating the user account and mailbox enabling them all at the same time. Or you can create a mailbox for an existing user. So that means that you already have the user account in Active Directory and you're now just mailbox enabling that user account. So because I don't have any accounts, uh, other accounts created in my Active Directory yet, I'm going to choose to create a new user. So in this form I get to fill out some basic information about the Active Directory user account. You can specify an OU uh, that the, uh, the user account will be created in. If you don't, it's just going to be put in the users container, the default users container, and that's fine for me in this case. I'm not going to change that. So let's go ahead and just give this mailbox user a name. I'm going to use my name, Paul Cunningham. set a strong password. Now the alias that you choose uh, may or may not be important depending on the email address policy that you've defined in your organization. So if you recall, those email address policies can use uh, attributes such as first name, last name, alias and other things to automatically uh, generate and assign uh, SMTP addresses to the mailbox. So in my case I am using the alias uh, to generate email addresses which means that uh, this mailbox user will get Paul Cunningham at exchangebootcamp.com. You also have an option here to specify the mailbox database uh, that it will be deployed on. So Exchange 2010 has uh, an interesting feature that will automatically uh, distribute new mailboxes uh, across uh, the available mailbox databases within the site and it works pretty well. It's, it only uh, dist uh, automatically distributes new mailboxes. It doesn't do a uh, continual rebalancing of mailbox distribution over time um, but if you are bulk creating mailboxes this can be a really handy way to spread them automatically between mailbox databases. Uh, so I'm going to leave that blank and uh, just let it pick whichever database it likes. Uh, 
And most of these other options here are, uh, are optional as well. And um, these are features that we can dive into in later lessons. So I'll leave those blank for now as well. For Exchange 2010, uh, we have the option also to create an archive mailbox. Um, so as the name suggests, that is a separate mailbox uh, associated with the user that can be used for archiving email items out of the primary mailbox. Um, again, that is a topic we're going to dive into uh, probably in a later lesson. So for now, I'm just going to say do not create an archive. So with all those options selected, I can hit new and it will go ahead and create that user object in Active Directory as well as Mailbox enable it for me. That task has been completed successfully so we'll finish the wizard and let's have a look at the result. So we'll go into Active Directory Users and Computers and we can see here the Paul Cunningham account was created now if I open up the properties of that, you'll notice that uh, none of the Exchange properties are available. So if you're familiar with working uh, with Exchange 2003 and Exchange 2000 before that, you might be used to seeing uh, the Exchange, uh, various Exchange tabs integrated into Active Directory users and computers. That's no longer the case uh, with Exchange 2007 and 2010 all of the Exchange administration is performed separately. So though you can go into Active Directory, of course, and look at the user object, you won't see any of the Exchange attributes or properties exposed here with the, the usual exception of yeah, the email address uh, field being populated. So going back into the Exchange Management Console, here's my Paul Cunningham mailbox. So let's have a look at the properties of that. Okay, we can see the organizational unit uh, that was automatically chosen. The uh, mailbox, uh, automatic mailbox provisioning load balancer picked mailbox database one, uh, so that's fine as well. And taking a look at the email addresses, we can see that my email address policy has applied and uh, Paul Cunningham at exchangebootcamp.com is the primary email address or primary SMTP email address on this mailbox. So that's how to create a new mailbox in Exchange Server 2010.